and handwriting versus smartphones. I have interviewed a lot of senior executives. This year's Inked Happiness Lifetime Award goes to Professor Pitka. Give him a big hand. Uh, we are trying to create an organization uh, with all the stakeholders who have uh, the ability to leverage uh, their own experiences and connections in the society to spread the message that fountain pen is just not about passion this is not about flaunting your social class. This is also about environment, our life, and it's also a legacy statement. With that, we would request all of you to disperse from the stage and leave Professor Janardhan to his own devices. Hope you enjoy. And another thing, can I request the auditorium light be put on because Professor Janardhan would like to see the audience reactions. Thank you very much. Good evening, Kolkata. Have I already gone to the last row? Yes. yes. Wonderful. Lovely to see you all on a Sunday evening. It's the seventh month of the year, and the clock, as it struck seven and went past, I'm going to talk to you about seven elements of handwriting. I'm going to show you a few slides also, but let me ask you, how many of you are aware of the seven elements of handwriting? All of us write. All of us went to school. They taught us how to write. And people say, oh, my handwriting is not so good. And when I came down here, I met Mr. Suparno, who said, my handwriting is not good. I said, don't blame anybody for bad writing. How many of you were told in your school, you have a bad handwriting, you must improve it? How many of you? In school, and your teacher wrote, you must improve your handwriting. How many of you could read that? <laughs> that itself was not good enough. And you said, oh, this teacher itself is scribbling and telling me to improve my handwriting? Oh, atrocious. How are you motivated to write well if your teacher doesn't write well? Again, can we blame teachers? I know there are a few people who are from teaching profession here or running some institutions to teach. Can we blame teachers? No. Why and where did it go wrong? I'm standing in the city where Robert Clive came in, right? East India Company. And then came that Macaulay who sent that system of education to us. And there came a flawed system of writing which created problems for all of us. So, for the last 400 years, Anybody who writes badly, tell them that's not your fault. It's a system failure. How do we really correct it and go about? So you can ask questions. You can stop me and say, yeah, I have a question. Please. I love questions. I love interactions. That's when you get something to take home, isn't it? You have some specific questions, please. Welcome. I have traversed from A to Z trying to understand why people write badly, and it took me from America to New Zealand, literally, to find out why people write badly. I'm here to help. And... I think that it is a cursive writing which were introduced in our team. Okay. It has been withdrawn. All right. Is not there. I will come to it. Many people, okay, all of us were taught cursive writing. But then, if it is taught properly, you could learn properly. The methodology is wrong. As I said, at... Past seven, seven elements. Let me just show you a few slides to explain what these seven elements are. I want to see the audience. All right. Corners of the square. Now, many of them, you look at that writing, would say, oh, that's calligraphy. Sorry. It's not calligraphy. It is just lettering. The way the corners of the square or the golden hand is written out, that's just lettering. And then there is my hand holding the quill, which I thought is the right way to 
pay rich tributes to the one of the finest writing instruments before the fountain pen era down into us okay now let's go to the next few slides and then yes questions are also welcome seven elements okay i love this learning begins in the womb and it only ends in the tomb i believe in that all of us are learners until death and i do believe the very reason that you're here is you came to learn something today from Professor Pitka and from the presentation of my friend from Mumbai. Where is he? Okay, the Nibmeister. All right, so you're all here and you came to learn. I believe that. So it only ends in the tomb, as I said. So let's get to what Mahatma Gandhi said. Here is the Suleika Ink Man. Again, because Mahatma Gandhi said, you need to make a Swadeshi ink, they got into it, I understand. So a lovely visit, I don't want to repeat that. A wonderful setup, and it's a great thing that Mr. Maitro is doing to bring in those inks. Now, you have a lovely fountain pen, but it's like having a Mercedes or a Ferrari, Maserati, Lamborghini, but you don't have high octane in it, what are you going to do? So that's the ink that provides you the high octane to pour out your emotions it's very emotional. It's an object of desire, full of emotions. And we human beings are full of emotions. We need to communicate. We need to tell people. Like one of them said, how do you write a love letter on email? But then love is also an emotion. Anger is emotion. Somebody really moved people to fight for this country, isn't it? And writers did that. The pen is mightier than the sword, somebody said. Similarly, it has different emotions captured at different times. So the colors at seven, let me tell you what made me go into this seven elements. Well, I won't go into great details. This was written 25 years ago when India celebrated 50 years of independence about how he believed that bad handwriting should be regarded as imperfect education. Today you tell any educationalist they will get angry. Oh, how dare you say that? I said, go ask him. Bad handwriting is considered as a sign of imperfect education, said Mahatma Gandhi, because of his experiences he had in England and South Africa. And he said, later I tried to improve mine. I couldn't. But then let every man and woman be warned by my example that good handwriting is a necessary part of education. All right? Okay, the seven elements there. The first one is handwriting, which all of us learned in school for day-to-day -day communication, be it English, be it any vernacular language. And the power of writing is something which I wanted you people to understand. It's got great power, but you have not unleashed it. So when you write in school, many people say it's not readable. But if you can write in a readable manner, wonderful, great. You can go from readable to adorable levels. And somebody says, wow, what a lovely handwriting you have. Great. Ten times a day, somebody says, oh, what a lovely handwriting. I already see smiles which are more than a few miles. It makes you feel nice. It's a positive stroke. It's a brownie point. And then you try to feel nice the whole day. Oh, what a lovely handwriting. You tell anybody, what a lovely handwriting. Smiles keep appearing. So, as somebody said, a thing of beauty is joy forever. And if you're able to produce that kind of writing, excellent. But why we are stuck, we are not able to do that. We'll come to that. <coughs> Those who write beautifully and artistically inclined move to the higher levels called as lettering. Today, 99% of the world mistakes lettering and calls it calligraphy. I'm sorry. It's just lettering. There are people who are either a new entrant into lettering, either they are novices, or amateurs or a semi-professional. And they say, I'm a calligrapher. I have a calligraphy pen, right? I also appeal to a lot of manufacturers here. I have our manufacturing friends here. Many people call it calligraphy pen. It's a lettering pen. Calligraphy is a status you attain by performance. So it's a progressive vertical handwriting. If you're good at it, you move to lettering in different styles, beautifully done for various things you could use it. You could use it to you know, decorate a lot of posters, or you could use it for labels, you could use it for monograms, you could use it for various purposes. Write poetry, do a lot of things with that. Then, 
comes the highest level called calligraphy, which has a spiritual dimension to it. Without the spiritual dimension, it's not in itself calligraphy. So please, in schools when they say, we teach calligraphy, I tell them, excuse me please, it has no place in schools. Because children in schools cannot understand this spiritual dimension and how to participate in it. We are doing injustice to the art form. Since time is short, I just thought I'll give you a bit of a, you know, a tip of the iceberg and later we could, if you want, you have questions, we can interact. Because it's a very deep subject, like Professor Pitka said, I can talk for an hour or I can talk for even 10 days about the subject. Each one is in depth. People may be wondering, what is there in A, B, C, D? Somebody showed us A, B, C, D and said, beta rate A, B, C, D, Z, ho gaya, A, B, C, D ka class ho gaya. Sorry, a lot of interesting things in it. Then comes the second vertical which I've shown, which some of you would have come across, graphology, graphonomy, and graphotherapy. Graphology is the science of studying your handwriting to talk about your character. It's a 60% indicator of your mindset and your character. It's not a 100% science, I'm sorry. But those who believe, they believe in it, and gullible people are taken away. Graphologists then were challenged by graphonomists. They said, you're like astrologers, gemologists, numerologists, what not. We are even more accurate. We are graphonomists, like astronomy. Don't read me wrong, please. I want to ask Isro, what happened to the Mars expedition? Where is Vikram? Where is Vikram? Have they found him again on Mars? If he were accurate, we would have found Vikram. So, driving the point that we are not 100% right in everything. They claim to be 100% right. Then you have graphotherapists. Hey, you got a hole in your heart? I'll give you strokes. It'll close. You got a kidney problem? I'll give you strokes. Your kidneys will, will become all right. So many such things have been going around. And somebody said, oh, you're poor. I'll make you rich. Hey, come on. India is such a poor country. I called these graphologists across from other countries and said, give these strokes. I'll take you to all the temples. We have hundreds of beggars. Let me see if the strokes can create an Indira Nui, a Bill Gates, an Arayan Murthy, or an Azim Premji. Show me. Come on. So I'm just trying to educate you. Don't fall prey to these things. That we can make you this, we can make you that. Nobody can make you more than what you already are. Just yourself. They can't convert you into anything else. So beware of this graphology, graphonomy, graphotherapy. If you do believe in it, it's up to you. It's your freedom to believe in it. And once you succumb to a belief system, anything that happens in your life after that, you'll say, oh, you see, because of that only this happened, even 2% improvement. If there was something horrible that happened, they'll say, look, 1000x negative force came towards you. Because you believed in it and practiced it, it was reduced to 100x. Interpretations, got it? Believe in yourself. So this is the central vertical, which I call it a bit controversial and contradictory. Because whatever you teach in the first vertical, how to form the letters beautifully and appreciate, here they'll say change the letter. If you write this way only, you'll become rich. And they're actually malforming the shapes. And, you know, the lowercase t is written with a crossbar on the top. It confuses you with a, you know, capital T. So many things like that they do and say, believe in this, then you'll become rich. Believe in this, you'll become this, you'll become that. Anyway, if you've had experiences, you will know. And the last one is not so emotional as the central vertical. It is rational, which is used in forgery detection. It's called the question document examination. How many of you have had checks where somebody has copied your signature? Legal documents which were, you know, faked. And then the court asked people like us to submit a report. We check completely, rationally, entry stroke to exit stroke, the whole path, the pressure variation, and then tell them where it agrees, where it doesn't agree. Now, this is a 100% rational science. So these are the seven elements. And to go deeper, because we have the Suleika man, man here. Today is the seventh day, I told you. Look at the significance of seven. I also got to talk just after seven, right? And what day of the week is it? Is it the seventh day of the week? Right? 
or the first day of the week. And some people will say seventh day of the week. And tomorrow morning, when the sun rises from all the darkness, what do you see? From darkness to light. And you see world in what? Black and white? Colorful, blue sky, green leaves, right? Orange sun, yellowish sun. Now, there are the inks there which are making it so colorful. So, visual delight is again made of what? Whip gyaw, seven colors. Mix and match, you got the hues of colors which Professor Pitka showed you. And he makes lots of colors. And, well, the MC said, so many colors to express your love and passion. The moods to be shown in colors, right? Yes. It is a mood enhancer. And let me ask you, how many of you are music lovers here? Oh, wonderful. <coughs> Indian? Western? Both. How many notes in Indian? Whether Carnatic or Hindustani? Seven? Sare Gama Padani? Western? Seven. Was it a coincidence? Now, look at this seven. It's got rhythm and harmony. Seven days in a week, seven colors, seven notes for your ears to listen to something beautiful, to relax you. So, the seven elements I found accordingly, and we have basic seven exercises with rhythm and harmony to improve your writing, to make it beautiful and adorable all right and as somebody said now handwriting can be a very very powerful tool if you can spend some time every day to get the pleasure of that buttery feel when he tunes the nib sudhir will make it right like writing on butter with butter right sudhir I can do that if that's what you want. yeah that's what is required now, you told them that, you know, if it doesn't write and all, no, 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 don't, don't, don't go by, don't, it doesn't write and all, he'll set it right. You get that buttery feel of writing. The moment you get that buttery feel, it's addictive. And your thoughts will flow, and even people who thought they were not poets will write poetry. That is the power of the fountain pen. I want you to take this message back to youngsters, to schools. Use the fountain pen. Your thoughts will flow. Your head thinks, your heart feels, and your hand writes. Your head, your heart, and your hand work in hand harmony and tandem and produce wonderful pieces. You're talking about great writers. You're talking about great poets. You're talking about somebody written so beautifully. How lovely it is. I mean, you are going into an ecstasy when you read that kind of pieces, isn't it? Those who are literally, I mean, who are into lit uh, what you call, you appreciate those uh, literal arts and then who appreciate poetry, you are really enjoying it. You say, what a lovely thought, what a lovely saying. Wow, great. Right or wrong? So, the fountain pen is the most beautiful writing instrument ever produced in this world till our generations. Don't read me wrong because I bring ball pens and gel pens into scribbling instruments. It helps you scribble. At this juncture, I must tell you what Alfred Fairbanks said, who found the Society of Italic Handwriting in England in 1952. He said, handwriting is the dance of the pen on paper. Wow. So you people are going to be holding a dancer, a ballerina dancer. That's the pen. How are you going to hold the pen? Tightly. Huh? Many people hold it. Huh? And the pen, if it had the tongue, and the ability to speak, it squeaks. <laughs> Most pens are telling me, they are actually throttling me. Ask them to hold me gently. So you hold the dancer gently, firmly, not too tightly, and then you perform the dance with your fingers and the pen. And your paper becomes a stage. And then when you start writing, it's truly the dance of the pen on paper. And let me tell you, if your performance is good, it draws applause. If it doesn't, some people feel, oh my God, am I expecting rotten eggs and rotten tomatoes? No, 
we every one of you can make the pen dance beautifully on paper it just takes a little bit of an effort a little bit of a practice you asked about cursive right cursive if it is taught properly the way it is to be formed unfortunately schools teach you copywriting the biggest flaw is copywriting how many of you wrote copywriting here wonderful what happened the first line was printed you saw the first line and wrote for example i'll give you a line i went to the market is the line how many of you wrote i went to the market i went to the market honest please honest answer how many of you wrote i went to the market i went to the market i went to the market how many of you wrote i i i i i went 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 to 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 the, 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 the market had no place so i joined the market and then you say your handwriting is gone bad you learned how to squeeze the letters horizontally and elongate it vertically and the teacher says you must improve your handwriting you were given some tracks to write what are those copy book has got some lines yes 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 what what four lines four lines wonderful america to new zealand everybody says four lines what are those four lines four lines in which you have to you know huh any anything more than four lines can anybody give me an answer some people say two red lines two blue lines right four lines two red lines two blue lines four lines have a name it's called an ascender line mean line base line and descender line all your letters in your lower case when you write your b d h k l have ascenders limited by the ascender line g j p q y have descenders limited by the last line and the central line is for the body of the letters shoulder to the waist Yes, the body. How easily you can teach children, but it's not being done in schools. It's so sad. And cursive needs a lot of curling, and there are some entry strokes. Now, where did this cursive come from? Why people suffer with cursive? We'll just take a look soon. All right. Let me give you. Somebody may ask you, hey, what man you I believe went for that ink happiness award function? Somebody spoke about handwriting. Define handwriting. What is handwriting? Can you define handwriting? Somebody can ask you. There it is. Handwriting is a visual expression of speech and a means by which we set down messages that we want to communicate. It's a deliberate act. That's the best definition one can give. What is handwriting? A visual expression of speech. I'm talking to you too. Can you see the words coming out of my mouth? So are these written by you? That's written by me in italic. This is copper plate. To write copper plate, you need a flexi nib. Today, everybody is ordering for flex nibs on Amazon, whatnot, and a lot of people have gone crazy over this flex nib. Dip and write, like the old times. William Mitchell, William Mitchell. William Mitchell Joseph Gillett. There are many of them. Hunt and Company, innumerous. Perry and Company. Dip, drain off the excess ink, and start writing. downward stroke you press hard the tines split a thick line upper stroke a fine line and they said oh wow what a contrast a thick and a thin line beautiful sugary flourishes 16th 17th century what was life aram se think over and write even after a week then you roll it and hey come on the horseman the local courier give it to him he'll go and deliver come 19th century copper plate writing was very difficult dip drain off excess ink write c o p it will dry out again dip drain off excess ink p p e again it will drain out you need to have a lot of patience to do that and many of you would have said oh my grandfather's handwriting was like print i say how many of you say that You know my grandfather's handwriting. Oh, almost like print. How many of you say that? How many of you, a copy of your grandfather's writing? Because they had all the time in the world to think, dip, drain of excess ink, and write slowly. Again, go there, dip, drain of excess ink, and write. Do you have that kind of time today? Can you do that? So, copper plate was meant to be written like that. Then, when they said we don't have time, we got the nibs which I've got. 
a tip which will produce a monoline. So when you write with monoline, what happened is look at the right side from bottom to top. I've written copper plate. That is cursive. From copper plate came when they removed all the flesh and chose only the bones. So I keep telling people, please meet an orthopedician because you know when you remove the flesh and leave the bones for years together, they develop osteoporosis. You know. And what happens when you have osteoporosis? They become brittle and they crumble. That's what has happened. And unfortunately, nobody to guide you properly. Let's look at this four pictures. First one on the left, that's an oblique holder. That's the pointed nib, which produced writing on the top left and right. Then came the modified cursive. Look at the bottom left. And then look at the last one on the right side. What happened to writing? They never taught us how to approach writing, holding the pen, your posture, the paper, where should it be kept in relation to your body, and how you should choose your comfort zone, and how you should move your hand across the page. Now, this is important in schools. I am lucky that I could teach at Oxford, Roehampton, Guildford, and Cambridge universities to the British that what they are doing is wrong with handwriting. And they agreed. But in our country, if I tell somebody in school and college, oh, I am a med, I am beard, I am PhD, you know? I know. My God. Sorry to say this. Some teachers are really pig headed. I'm sorry. Ruining the future of the next generation, not allowing them to enjoy the pleasure of writing. The objects of desire, you must have pleasure, isn't it? Now, I feel pity sometimes. Don't read me wrong. You, they have a Lamborghini, Maserati, and you have a driver. I mean, if I have a you know, BMW and a Mercedes, I won't let anybody else take the wheel. I want the wheel, right? I mean, you get the pleasure of driving. Otherwise, what's the big fun in buying those kind of cars? When you have those kind of pens, you need to get the pleasure of writing it beautifully. And with those colors giving you the tones. Oh, I know some people must have already been experiencing the pleasure, so you're able to relate to it. But I want all of you to enjoy the process of writing. So... Cursive is a beautiful style, but not conducive because not being taught properly. Then a lot of research was done. Now, if you look at who taught this ABCD, where does this ABCD come from? Where is ABCD from? Who taught this ABCD? Yes, please, come on. You're from Robert Clive's place. East India Company landed here. And this is where everything started. Kolkata. Come on. Who taught us ABCD? British. British. Yes. But who taught the British? Go back to your computers. Open up and see the fonts you have, including Satyajit Ray has Ray Roman. Why is that Roman Roman sticking around as a suffix to a font? Because A to Z was designed by the Romans. And Romans ruled Britain more than Britain ruled us. 400 plus years the Romans ruled Britain and then they introduced them to ABCD. So people may not agree with me. Common sensic, commonsensical approach. Where is Rome? Italy. So Italic should be the right way of doing. And everybody flaunts, I have an Italian bathroom. I have an Italian designed car. Suit designed in Milan in Italy, <laughs> Italian fashion, Italian design. Why Italy, Italy, Italy? Huh? A place of artists. And Professor Pitko will agree. A place of people where art flourished. They looked at various interesting aspects. They looked at aesthetics. They looked at symmetry. They looked at proportions. Wow. Right or wrong? And so, I believe, and I followed italic, but by following italic, and if you perfect your writing in italic with the right nuances, your cursive becomes better. Because you get disciplined in writing with italic. So these are the problems of cursive, you see. I wrote, my dear, it looks like my clear. Look at aluminium, look at humor, rumor, whatever it is. Every day, your H, M, N, U, V, Ws get flattened out into waves. 
when you write faster. And that R and S has a hood on top. Every day it's chopped off because they go to Middle East and commit a heinous crime. We are chopping it off. And R and S for a, I mean S for a plural is hanging, clinging to the next letter, last letter. Hey, I'm S, recognize me. How sad. And when you write separately, I think there is clarity. And I found this really ridiculous in most of the English schools in our country where they say, you know, this boy in ninth standard is writing like unjoined. It's immature. How many of you have heard that? That's immature writing. How many of you have heard that? You must join up and write. So I have good fun. Excuse me. What's your mother tongue? What's your mother tongue? Hindi, Bengali, Telugu, Tamil. In your mother tongue when you write, do you join up and write? <laughs> then teacher, are you immature in your mother tongue? <laughs> oh my God, I never thought about it. Please start thinking. So that is a common line. Pandit Hindi mein wo bhi nahi hota hai. Gujarati mein bhi upar ka ek rekha nahi hota hai na. That's the matra. Matra is for accents. Okay, but the common line that connects all the letters, not, but letter to letter connection. So it's all common sense. I think you have to go back and tell people, write separately. And from the day you were born, the day you were shown ABCD to your textbooks, to your notebooks, to your, I mean, sorry, not notebooks, textbooks, to your printed newspaper you read in the morning, to everything, everything is unjoined. The child gets confused. Are yaar, sabhi kuch unjoined dikhata hai. Likhte wakt hai, join, join karta hai. Hey, boring ya. Many people find this copywriting a boring thing. How many of you found it? Ha, ah, what a pleasure to write copywriting. Tell me. See, a lot of heads going, no, 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 no. But if it's introduced in a way by a teacher who writes beautifully and says, look, if you write beautifully, you get more marks. Many of my students who had bad spellings and bad grammar were given full marks because the teacher says, I can make out where the mistakes are. <laughs> when you scribble, I can't make out where, what is the mistake? And a classic example is I have a confusion with the spelling of sentence, S-E-N-T-E-N-C-E -E -E or S-E-N-T-A-N-C-E. -E. So where it is E or A, I write E and A together, one over the other. Oh, it's almost like call for the third empire, I say, hey, kya hai, run out decision. Yeah or A, yeah, A or E, I mean, it's like that. So you're making teachers third umpires. A lot of fun. I can tell you it's very, very, very humorous. If I tell you one piece of note I had got, unfortunately, I didn't get that piece later. Two friends living in Bangalore in 90s. You know, they were sharing a flat, flat. One of them saying that my mother is not well. I need to go take care of her. And one fine day he comes home, the other friend, and finds his friend is missing. He's gone. He left a note. He saw the note, mother's cremation will be back after 15 days. After 15 days, this guy comes back, knocks at the door, and then he opens the door and says, hi, hello. The guy who lost his mother is joyful and says, hello. What would you expect? If your friend wrote a note, mother's cremation will be back after 15 days, and you open the door after 15 days, and you find him in a joyful mood. Oh my God, lost his mother, must have lost his balance. <coughs> so I believe this fellow, real story, gave him a slap and said, come to your senses, man. Why are you slapping me, I say? What is this not? Mother's operation, I'll be back in 15 days. <laughs> your mother's operation became mother's cremation. Look at this. How malforming letters can misguide you, misinform you, and so much of misunderstandings can happen. There's enough and lot more like that. We can have a big hilarious session. You will find it in your day-to-day -day life. The way people write. Like that, my dear, I wrote, right? You write a love letter, my dear, and it looks like C-L-E-R, my clear. That means I'm clearing you out, next girlfriend is coming. What can misunderstanding happen, isn't it? Well, the proper definition is, people say good handwriting, good handwriting. What is good handwriting? A good handwriting is legible, which means you don't overwrite. Like a C and T and C, T and C, no, no overwriting. Write it clearly. And then each letter is properly formed, which means it has to be identified as that letter. 
it shouldn't be malformed with proportionate height and width and it should be spaced properly between words and lines. Now somebody told you in school, what is the spacing between words you remember? Any of you? Somebody told you, yes, 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 primary school. Ah, lovely, which finger? Huh? This finger, huh? what is this index finger? Anybody else, any other finger? Are you clear? Huh? Little finger. Okay, we have two parties. What for four finger? What for little finger? Which one gets more words? Anyway, four finger or little finger? Who told you? Teacher. Teacher, when? Uh, class one. May. Class one. May. Abhi, class one say till now, you have grown up. Your finger also has grown along with you, or is it the same size still? <laughs> we still continue it. A strong and grime. Teacher bol diyo. Tadak. One finger. ABB one finger. Two words will go far away. You must have your hoogly bridge to connect it. <laughs> so the spacing is one letter O in your own handwriting. If you have the space between words, that's beautiful. One space. One O. One letter O in your own <coughs> handwriting. If you have a variable handwriting, take the median. I mean average size of the O that you write, lowercase O. Spacing between lines. Simple. The first line descenders, if you have written G, J, P, Q, Y somewhere, and the next line when you write your BDHKL, they should not touch each other. Otherwise, they will cling to each other and create optical illusion. Rule lines milta hai. Wo rule ko bhi overrule kar dete hai. Very well said. Rule de de bhi overrule it. Kisi ka G aisa hota hai. Why aisa hota hai? Isn't it? And that has to be slender. Sometimes that becomes oblong. I mean, malformation of letters happens because of the loops you're not able to control. Anyway, to try and make it a little more shorter because time is going up. Nobody can be blamed for the bad handwriting as I told you, especially doctors. Please don't take a dig at doctors. They were also like you and me who went to the same school. They were also taught the same thing, right? Don't blame doctors. Any doctor here? MBBS doctor, not PhD. Some doctors write beautifully, of course. Huh, I must tell you, I have quite a few friends who are doctors who write beautifully. So I asked them, what is the reaction of your patients? They say, some patients ask them, doctor, don't mind. Are you really MBBS? <laughs> because you know, society has said, if you can scribble well, you can become a doctor. And they don't look at your MBBS. If you... <laughs> <laughs> That's another story, I'll tell you another day. But some doctors say, some people say, Doctor, your handwriting is so beautiful. I know what medicine I'm going to take. I'm so happy that I know what is happening to me. Not like other doctors who don't even, you know, write something which is understandable even by the pharmacist. I ran a pharmacy for three years. I'll tell you a famous joke that was going on. A young doctor fell in love with a young nurse and wrote a love letter. She couldn't read it. I said, what shall I do? Ah, the best thing is go to the pharmacist. That guy should be able to find out. <laughs> so she went to a pharmacist and gave this love letter. And that guy read out, he has actually prescribed one intravenous injection for you, one antidepressant, and one general tonic. Hare, what is this man? He wrote me a love letter and you're giving me a love potion prescription. <laughs> what a formulation. <laughs> right? So anyway, don't. it's because we are... You know, victims of a wrong methodology, as I told you, and brilliant students scoring low marks. We are bothered about a lot of brilliant students scoring low marks and committing suicides because they didn't get the marks that they expected. I'm sorry to say a lot of people are getting depressed because they don't get the marks that they deserve. And then average ones are failing in exams. Now, as Professor Pitkar said, and also handwriting versus typewriting. Have you seen what's the difference? Handwriting versus keyboards, and handwriting versus smartphones. I have interviewed a lot of senior journalists, and they told me, when I used to write, pen down my 
articles. You know, my readers used to say, oh, that article was so interesting, so absorbing, and it showed how well you poured out that information with the right kind of, you know, pitch, the right kind of words used. Ah, oh, that was fantastic. It was you know, ecstatic reading it. But when we type, we don't feel the letters. Everything is a flat tap, 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 tap. So, your emotions are not really recorded well. That's what so many senior journalists told me. And I want to tell you, use of handwriting has never been detrimental to any human beings for thousands of years. But use of all these gadgets have created finger arthritis, repetitive strain injury, carpal tunnel syndrome, back pain, neck pain, what not. Overusage. And today kids are using mobile phones. Last time I was in England with another England, an Indian family, there was a nine month child or a one year old child whom the mother could not control and the child has not learnt ma, pa or amma, appa or mataji, pitaji, what do you say in Bengali? Baba, Baba ma. The first word that the child learns is aipa, aipa, aipa. What is that, yeah? Is it a new nomenclature for mother and father? No, iPad. <laughs> That's what the child learns. Where are we heading? Please think. I want you to think strongly and say, bring back fountain pens. Bring back fountain pens in your life. And recent thing that happened was a parent, two people came, I mean, the mother and father, and said, my son doesn't read at all. And my daughter refuses to write. OK, all right. Please teach them how to read and write, okay? Then the children tell me, I've never seen my father and mother read or write all the time stuck with the mobile phone. So what are the examples that we are setting? It's a learned behavior, isn't it? We all learn certain mannerisms from our older people. Or that's why you have these kind of uh, great sports icons and great matinee idols, because you copy them, isn't it? So handwriting is a learned behavior and copied behavior, so please, be careful when you are doing something and please, if you are a teacher, tell them, teacher, teacher, teach yourself before you go teach others. And no B.Ed, M.Ed course or a Ph.D. in education all over the world, including England, teaches you anything about handwriting. That's the sad state of affairs. Wake up! Calcutta, Kolkata, wake up to the fact and go reach out to schools, go reach out to children and say, use fountain pens and try to form the letters beautifully. And then you will find that many people say, oh, it's a habit. A habit one yeah. Pressure, all that. So look at that word habit. It's such a stubborn thing. Eh? Remove the H, a bit remains. Remove the A, bit remains. Remove the B, a bloody it still remains. You got to rewrite your habits. It takes time to unlearn and relearn and to rework on your muscle memory. So rewriting habits happen like that. Well, the time is about 8 o'clock. I started at quarter past 7, so I need your permission. I can close and later we can discuss. I don't want to hold you back. But I hope the message is loud and clear. A thing is duty is joy forever. And with good handwriting, you can impress anyone, any age, any time, any place. Right? So next time you pick up your writing instrument, Think you're holding a ballerina dancer and start dancing on the paper. I leave you with those thoughts and I can leave you with one more thought saying that if you can visualize the invisible, you can accomplish the impossible. Thank you, Calcutta. Thank you, Professor Charles. <laughs> so I can tell you one thing, just hold on a second. Oh, all right. <laughs> there are other reasons for <laughs> having bad handwriting. See, my, my teacher, my mother was really, very really attractive. And the teacher in my school, I come from a Bengali medium school. Uh, she was, you know, some way or the other, uh, never liked my mother. And the whole ayah used to turn down on me. So therefore, the handwriting class was a torture for me. So whenever the teacher used to come in, the first thing I would do, we used to have those thin boxes in the school, you know. I'll carry that thin box because I know I need to show none of the class. I'll go out and sit outside. So my handwriting is so bad, so bad, 
that I never had a girlfriend. In fact, before my marriage, I never had a girlfriend. I never knew, you know, because twice I wrote two love letters and, well, uh, you know, <laughs> what happens. And uh, I told him that, uh, why don't you help me improve my handwriting? He had a look at my handwriting yesterday night and said, okay, it's a gone case. You write so well, <laughs> don't worry, at least this is legible. Having said that, Chom, can you please come up to the stage? It's time for your vote of thanks. And uh, the rest of the proceedings are in your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I don't think I have anything else to say that I can add uh, of value uh, after what uh, Professor Janardhan has said. We must thank Suparnoda for everything because uh, he has been spending the last many days with us. Uh, I mean, uh, it's, his presence is always a blessing for us. So he has been blessing us. I must thank every one of you who have come here. I must also thank uh, Yusufji, Arunji, Hiroji, uh, Koiralaji, who, uh, if uh, I don't know it was mentioned or not, but. Uh, He's the prime minister in waiting in Nepal. And uh, so all of you who have come, uh, I, uh, I, I, I don't know how to thank everyone. Thank you for being with us. And please read our blogs. We've just started a YouTube channel also. Please subscribe. Please see. And please use a fountain pen. Uh, what do I say? Thank you.